Who are the ones you're not allowed to talk about? Who can't you say shit about? Have you ever wondered why Western society has become so woke? Well, to answer this question, we have to look at the Frankfurt School. Founded in 1923 by two Jewish Marxists named Karl Grunberg and Felix Weil. The basic idea was that traditional class Marxism was not effective in creating a communist revolution in a lot of these Western countries. So Marxist scholars theorize that the only way to successfully have a revolution in these countries would be through other means, like the culture and the institutions. But they were kicked out of Germany in 1933 when the National Socialists came to power and saw them as a communist threat to the nation. So they packed up and after a while they made their new home at Columbia University, New York City. By now the institute was under the leadership of Max Horkheimer, another Jewish Marxist. Horkheimer, along with another Jewish Marxist named Theodor Adorno, would come up with concepts like critical theory. The basic idea of critical theory was to criticize and undermine every aspect of traditional Western society, which would ultimately lay the groundwork for things like critical race theory, anti-white rhetoric. They would also go on to write books like The Authoritarian Personality, which alleges that anti-Semitism and hatred comes from things like a healthy family life, having pride in one's country, or having pride in one's race. Herbert Marcuse was another prominent figure in the Frankfurt School, and he was another Jewish Marxist. Along with a couple other Jewish Marxists, they were incredibly influential in the 1960s New Left movement, laying the foundation for things like the LGBT movement, radical feminism, sexual liberation, and political correctness, and really just laying the groundwork for what we would know today as wokeness. They also proposed that the best way to propagate these ideas would be through radio, television, mass media, film, and education. And well, you get the idea. But the main point of this video was really to shine a light on all of the prominent members being Horkheimer, Adorno, Marcuse, Walter Benjamin, Eric Fromm. All these people are Jewish. And even Israeli historian Gershom Sholem once said that the Frankfurt School was a Jewish sect. But hey, I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Register. Is, is there any other Republican who has your views on this? Well, I have Republicans who come to me on the floor and say, I wish I could vote with you today. Yours is the right vote, but I would just take too much flack back home. And I have Republicans who come to me and say, that's wrong what APAC is doing to you. Let me talk to my APAC person. By the way, everybody but me has an APAC person. What like, does that mean, an APAC person? It's like your babysitter, your APAC babysitter, who... Uh, is always talking to you for APAC. They're probably a constituent in your district, but they are, you know, firmly embedded in APAC. And every member has something like this. Every I don't know how it works on the Democrat side, uh, but that's how it works on the Republican side. And when they and when they come to D.C., you go have lunch with them and they've got your cell number and you have conversations with them. So I've had like. That's absolutely crazy. I've had four members of Congress say, I'll talk to my APAC person. And it's literally what we call them, my APAC guy. <laughs> I'll talk to my APAC guy and see if I can get him to, you know, dial those ads back. Why have I never heard this before? It doesn't benefit anybody. Why would they want to tell their constituents that they've basically got a buddy system with somebody who's representing a foreign country? It, it doesn't benefit the congressman for people to know that. So they're not going to tell you that it's it's in. It, it, have you seen any other country do anything like this? Like no. R Russia, Russia obviously determines the outcome of our elections. We keep hearing that. D does anyone have a Putin guy that they talk to? Not only do they not have a Putin guy, <laughs> look, they don't. They, they don't have a Britain guy. They don't have an Australian guy. They, you know, they don't have a Germany dude like <laughs> It's the only country that does this. אנחנו הולכים למסלול התנגשות עם הממשל האמריקאי. ארצות הברית זה לא מקשה אחת, זה לא מקשה אחת. 
יש את הסנאט, יש את הקונגרס, יש את הכוח היהודי שהוא עצום, יותר חזק משהיה אי פעם, יש דעת קהל, יש לנו כוחות כבירים בדעת הקהל שמתנגדים למדיניות הזאת, גדולי הפרשנים. אמריקה לא תכפה לנו דבר. suicidal nature of militant Islam, the next thing you'll see uh, is uh, the militant Islam is bringing down the World Trade Center. Nations, democracies, don't go to war easily. And they usually debate and argue uh, before they do. Sometimes they have to be bombed into going to war. Uh, nations, democracies, don't go to war easily. And they usually debate and argue uh, before they do. Sometimes they have to be bombed into going to war. Uh, Sometimes they have to be bombed into going to war. In fact, that's what happened in World War II. All of Europe had been conquered. You had to, uh, America was actually bombed in Pearl Harbor. And that was a pivotal event that opened the eyes of Americans. And once their eyes were opened, they gathered the, the power that is available in this great free nation. And uh, the result was preordained. Uh, I think in a, in a similar way, The bombing of September 11th opened the eyes of uh, Americans to see the great conflict and the great danger that faces us. And once opened, then the, the overpowering uh, uh, will of the majority of the people of the United States, of the, the steamroller, is uh, inexorably moving to, to decide this battle. And this, I, I think, has been a wake-up call from hell. It is telling us. You have the power now to act, summon the will, because the terrorists have the will to destroy America, to destroy freedom, to destroy all of America's allies and all the democracies, Israel being simply on the front line. There is no question whatsoever that Saddam is seeking and is working and is advancing towards the development of nuclear weapons. No question whatsoever. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you, that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. Benjamin Netanyahu has publicly said the September 11th attacks have been good for Israel. Netanyahu said, quote, we're benefiting from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and Pentagon and the American struggle in Iraq. I wrote a book in 1995, and I said that if, it, if the West doesn't wake up to the suicidal nature of militant Islam, the next thing you'll see Uh, is uh, the militant Islam is bringing... If you take away the Soviet Union and its chief proxy, the PLO, international terrorism would collapse. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. Obviously, we'd like to see a regime change, at least I would, in Iran, just as I would like to see in Iraq. The question now is a practical question. What is the best place to proceed? It's not a question of whether Iraq's regime should be taken out, but when should it be taken out? It's not a question of whether you'd like to see a regime change in Iran, but how do it... Are there any other nations that you would recommend that the United States launch preemptive attacks upon at this point? Uh, the answer is categorically yes. Uh, the, uh, the two nations that are vying, competing with each other, who will be the first to achieve nuclear weapons, uh, is Iraq and Iran. But uh, a third nation, by the way, is Libya as well. Libya is uh, trying very rapidly to build... Uh, an atomic bomb capability. So you have here now three nations. Let's all stand together to stop Iran's march of conquest, subjugation, and terror. I know that no matter on which side of the aisle you sit, you stand with Israel. Because the fact is, we don't have to be in the Middle East other than we want to protect Israel. We've been very good to Israel. But other than that, we don't have to be in the Middle East. We don't need, you know, there was a time we needed desperately, or we don't need that anymore. We have more than they do. Isn't that nice? For as long as I live, for as long as I have the privilege of serving in the Senate from New York, I will unflinchingly, unstintingly, and with all of my strength, be Shomer Yisrael, a guardian of Israel.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Yisroel Chai. In Israel and America, the Jewish nation lives now and forever. undergoing a soft coup, and the idea is to create a whole new set of laws and ignore the existing human rights laws and other laws under the pretext of pandemic preparedness and the biosecurity agenda. The WHO is developing through all its nations, but with the WHO directorate in the United States in charge, a pandemic treaty and amendments to the existing international health regulations that will remove the human rights protections currently um, embedded in the IHRs, will enforce surveillance, censorship, get rid of freedom of speech, require governments to censor and only push a single narrative. Also, we will be sub subject, if, if they can make this work, to vaccines developed in 100 days, which the organization CEPI is planning to do. And one of the people who founded CEPI was Jeremy Farrar, who is now the chief scientist at the WHO to bring this forward. Um, other things that... Uh, that Amendments do is to bind the state so they are no longer recommendations but enforceable edicts, uh, provide a liability shield, get rid of intellectual property rights, move supplies from one country to another, um, enforce digital passports, and the director general of WHO can demand that a pandemic or a potential pandemic exists he can just declare it with no standards, and then countries around the world will have to obey. Uh, also, the WHO will tell you what drugs you can and can't use in your nation once a pandemic is declared. Obviously, the budget will increase. Um, One Health is another part of this. One Health is a concept that was created to enable the WHO, with these documents, to take over jurisdiction of everything in the world by saying that climate change, animals, plants, water systems, ecosystems are all central to health. Also embedded in this concept is a peculiar notion that humans are no longer of greater value than animals.